If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face should really show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. That's all you get to do. <laughs> Princesses, did we not have a great time singing that song with the little kids yesterday, right? You might recall uh, when I bring up a dad to help with that or an adult to help with that. Actually, I gave, made you guys do it, but you might have saw the other time when I, I invited the dad to come up, and they're usually very terrible at this. They usually just drop the ball completely. They cannot coordinate three things. You know, when I do clap your hands, stomp your feet, you know, the whole thing, they're terrible at it. But at least they have a heart for a little bit of joyous heart, and they have a good time doing that. But you know, this, this song itself, it's about gratitude, right? When you happen, you know it. You know, let people know, show it, express it. It's a theme that runs all the way through the Old Testament, and it's actually pretty frequently found there. For example, King David writes a lot about this theme of gratitude, praising God, being thankful. For example, Psalm 145, verses 1 through 3. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise, his greatness no one can fathom. Psalm 150, it's, I love the title. It's a psalm of pure praise and one thing after another, here with the praise. Psalm 100, one, for the, one through five, one of my favorite ones. Jump up to that one, guys. Psalm 100. Shout for joy for, to the Lord of all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness, some before him and with joyful songs. Know what the Lord is God. Know the Lord is God and it is he who made us and we are his we are of his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Old Testament filled with examples, psalms, and of course even at the very beginning of the Bible, we see that Noah after being rescued from 40 days and 40 nights of rain, which we're about to experience for ourselves, it seems like, uh, he was so grateful to God that he builds an altar. Abraham, the father of our faith, same situation, so grateful for the blessings he received, again, builds an altar. A substantial reaction to the thankfulness that they are, are feeling. And one of my favorite characters in the Old Testament is Job who goes through so much. He starts with so much and loses everything. He experiences life in a way that I wouldn't wish on anybody. But yet he thanks God. From his own words, at this Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, You know, naked I came in to my mother's womb and naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. May the Lord, name of the Lord be praised after he loses pretty much everything. And all this Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. So yeah, the theme of gratitude runs throughout the Old Testament, but it also then runs through the New Testament as well. And Paul, one of the, one of the most grateful disciples of all, if you ask me, wrote about it in many different ways. And one that I, I think is important for us to capture today. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. He also said this to a church in Ephesus, chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. Make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God, the Father for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And still another church in, in, in uh, the church in uh, Colossians, <laughs> Colossians uh, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. And in this short verse, there's three examples that he wants us to take a look at. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whatever in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord, Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. All right, now this is from a guy who, like Job, lost everything. If something bad could happen, it happened to Paul. 
And yet he still has this heart for gratitude that is, I think, so much higher than our understanding what God expects of us. You know, I've, I've, I've talked about and preached about, and I think in last week Pastor Bob mentioned, uh, you know, having an attitude of gratitude. And I, and I talked to him about that. I said, you know, it's a, when you read these scriptures, an attitude of gratitude does not get it done. It's a good starting point. The expectation God has for us in terms of being grateful, if it's attitude is here is gratitude, we need to get way up here. We need to be the ones writing the Psalms and building the altars and doing the work in the kingdom of God and doing it with a joyous heart no matter what our circumstances. That's the kind of attitude that we're talking about, a much more than just a base level. It's an extraordinary level of gratitude that God is calling on us. And I think we can get it. I really believe that we can, we can grow in our attitude of gratitude substantially, but only if we tackle it through a perspective of being a follower of Jesus Christ. And today I want to take just a few minutes that we would work on that together. We'd identify what that perspective is, that we would understand gratitude from a Christian perspective. And i got a real easy way to remember it. There's three Bs that we're going to look at. And the first one is this. First, you have to recognize you've received a benefit. You've received something you appreciate, like, or love. The first step to understanding the kind of gratitude that they had in the Old Testament and the New Testament is realizing that you've gotten a benefit. Hey, think for a moment about the worst gift you've ever received from somebody. And I think for a lot of you, it's kind of hard because you know you got grateful hearts and you're thankful and you're polite and whatnot. But uh, I can remember the one I gave to my wife because it was just last year. Terrible gift, and at least her thoughts. You know, the funny thing is I had researched it. I had checked with my children to make sure that this was a good idea. And, and I'm going to tell you, as far as I'm concerned, even to this day, it was a good idea. I, I got her one of those instant grinding coffee, automatically grinding coffee machines, right? And it would make an extraordinary cup of coffee, and it was expensive. And I'm thinking, she's really going to appreciate this. Well, when she got the gift, she was very polite, very loving, very kind. But a couple of days later, she said, maybe we could send this back and I could get something I really like. Oh, 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 the pain of it all, right? But here's reality, gang. If you don't like the gift, if you don't see that there's a benefit, you don't love it, it's hard to be grateful about it. Isn't that true? So, keeping that in mind, as Christians, our lives are filled with benefits, we don't always acknowledge them, and sometimes we don't even see them. But God, the God who loves us, showers us with benefits. And King David has a great perspective on this. Let me read this Psalm 103, uh, verses 1 through 5. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and, forgot, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion? Who satisfies your desires with good things? Second part of our Christian framework for understanding to get our hearts to be more grateful, right? We, we, we have to know that there's a benefactor. We have to know that there's somebody giving us something. Now, you might receive a great gift, and if it's anonymous, although you might appreciate it and love it, wouldn't it be nice to know who gave you the gift? Right? Because you could really show gratitude at this point. Well, our benefactor is obviously God. He showers us with benefits, and clearly we have to recognize that our benefactor, the second B, is God Almighty. And that leads us to the third one, because this works together. All of this works together. You have to have a benefit, acknowledge there's a benefit. You have to acknowledge that you've been given something. And then there is the beneficiary, and that is us. But here's the key to this. Here's the really the bottom line. You got a benefactor, you got a benefit, and a beneficiary. And we have to realize that there is nothing we have done to deserve the blessings we receive. 
Nothing. You can't work for it. You can't pray your way into it. You can't beg for it. It's just God gives you this gift, and we're the beneficiaries. We're the ones who receive it. And you see, when we can put that together in our heads and really start to get that into our hearts, then we can start to see how, how these Old Testament characters were starting to understand what they received. They got it. They understood how valuable the gift was. You know, one thing we all have in common, and I mean universally, is there are all a bunch of crybabies when we're born. That's just a fact. Think about it, right? You know any kid that didn't cry when he didn't get his milk, right? Wasn't unhappy with his diaper not being, being all needed to be changed? You know, we're all crybabies when we start. But as we mature, as we get a little bit older, we start to realize and our parents begin to teach us that, hey, there's this thing called reciprocity, right? You, you know, you give a little, you get a little. And there's fairness out there. And then we also have to put some effort into getting the things that we want in life. You know, and when that teaching doesn't happen, when parents just give kids whatever they want, or they just always are, you know, a pat on the head, you, you know, you're doing a good job, even though they didn't work for it, they begin to be very self-centered, sometimes narcissistic, and they, they have this perceived entitlement over time that, hey, I deserve, I'm great, I, I, I deserve everything I, I want. And it's a problem that's been growing in our country for a while. More and more people are, are expecting an entitlement and a free meal for their lives because they been, haven't been taught that there's something you have to do to deserve it. Nothing is given away for free, really. You have to work at it. Uh, as Christians, we have that same mentality sometimes. We live in abundance, and we take for granted all the blessings we have. Ephesians 1.3 says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. We live in abundance as Christians. And I'm going to give you five quick examples of how we live in abundance. I mean, we are so incredibly blessed, starting with the fact that we have been saved by Jesus Christ Almighty. And the second thing is we have been showered by grace and with grace, even though we did nothing to deserve it, right? We have an incredible peace in our lives because we can depend on and trust God in all situations, all circumstances. And of course, we have joy, deep and meaningful joy in our lives because no matter all of what kind of mistakes we make, God is there to lift us back up again, put us back on track. And we also have the Holy Spirit, which guides us Again, in whatever problems we're running into, whatever help we need, the Holy Spirit is always there to help us and guide us. I've got a question for you. Considering the blessings that I just named, your spiritual blessings, has there ever been a time when you're not grateful to God? Well, how about today, for example? I mean, most of us fall very short of the high bar that's been set. And, and I put myself at the top of the list. I am not always grateful for what God has given me. I'm not fulfilling my duty and the will of God to thank God for all that I have. Even though I've been saved, I've got grace, peace, Holy Spirit, I, I just don't get the job done sometimes. And some people take it even a step further. Not only are they not grateful, but they grumble as well. You know, complain about their circumstances. They complain to God. They complain to God that, you know, my neighbors seem to have more blessings than me. Sometimes they even take on a victim mentality, or they're just flat out jealous of the things that other people have. And they're, they're concerned about the plan that, that God has given them, and it's, wow, well, it's taking me to a place where I've got to do a lot more hard work than my neighbor. And, and, and they complain and grumble about the fact that, how come I'm the one always doing all the serving? Some people just get away with it all. We grumble. We grumble. Maybe you grumble how unfair the world is, how much suffering and injustice is in the world. And, you, and you, what kind of a God loves us that's that way? Well, you know, in this series that we just got through with Moses, do you remember how many times that the Bible said the Israelites grumbled? Every time their bellies got a little empty, they grumbled, you know, the mother, you're not feeding us. 
and they would grumble when the water ran out. And when Moses was gone too long, they would grumble time after time. They grumbled and complained, and they certainly were not grateful. See, when you grumble, it's impossible to be grateful. This is true in your life. It's true in church. Paul wrote about this bunch of Israelites that were grumbling all the time in a letter to a church in Corinth. And he said in 1 Corinthians 10.10, And do not grumble as some of them did, talking about the Israelites back in the time of Moses, who were killed, by the way, by a destroying angel. It's, it should resonate with us that God is very displeased with the grumblers out there. And so you would think, knowing the consequence of grumbling does not lead you to a closer relationship, you're actually living a life that is opposed to God. Without gratitude in your heart, you're working in opposition with God. When you think about it, what do you really have to grumble or complain about? You've been saved. For goodness sake, Jesus gave his life for us. You have the peace and the joy and the presence of the Holy Spirit. You're so blessed. I'm so blessed. How could we possibly complain? What we should be doing is filling our hearts with gratitude. But I know how hard that is. I, I, I think we all know how hard it is to be grateful some days. Remember how high the bar was set here? Paul said, pray continuously. Give thanks in all circumstances. But, you know, one thing about Jesus, he always helps us when we need to move forward with our lives. There's always something you can look to Jesus and say, I can't do this on my own. I need help. And so Jesus very clearly gives us the tools we need to grow our hearts in gratitude, starting with prayer. In fact, he gives two different prayers for us to consider. The first is the Shema, which uh, you know, Mike, or may know, that comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6, very familiar to most of you. Before, back in the day, before they actually would say this prayer, they would cover their eyes before they said this prayer. And the reason being, is they wanted to make sure that their minds and their hearts were in the right place. They wanted to make sure that they said it reverently. And you know the scripture. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your strength. It's a prayer that needed to be said and felt so you can begin to train yourself to be grateful. And there's another prayer. It's called the Amida. And this, uh, this particular prayer has 18 benedictions, like 18 blessings in it. And, and it was a way for all, all the disciples and all the disciples of all the rabbis to actually express their gratitude to God. And here's what's interesting about this prayer. Each, each, each rabbi kind of taught it a little differently, but they all started with the same ritual. Before you said the prayer, you had to take three steps backwards, you took three steps forward, and then with your feet together, you would say it loud enough so you could hear it yourself, but not so loud you're screaming it out. And you'd recite this prayer. And each rabbi, again, taught it a little bit differently, but they all had this ritual they would go through because they wanted to make sure people's minds were on the job in front of them, that they had the right attitude before they got into this prayer. Now, you might recall in the Bible where the disciples of Jesus asked him, hey, Lord, teach us how to pray. And they were actually referring to this, this, this particular prayer, these 18 benedictions. They wanted to know Jesus' take on those. Teach us to pray, Jesus. And he gave them a prayer in a kind of condensed version. And we know it as the Lord's Prayer. You know the one that goes like this, and join with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Rejoice always. Pray continuously in all circumstances. This is God's will for you. In other words, he wants 
prayer warriors. He wants people that are absolutely committed to a life of prayer. And when you do that, your heart expands for Jesus. You feel more grateful when you take on this attitude of being a prayer warrior. You know, October 19th is our next prayer service. And I think I've mentioned on a number of occasions that we need to take the spirit that's happening in those prayer services and start to make them a part of this service on Sunday mornings. That it's not enough that we just have a separate time for that. It's got to be the way we do things. We have to incorporate prayer into the essence, into the fabric, into the thread of every single service that we do all the time. We have to be prayer warriors. But man, that is a big step. And I, and I can't think of a better way to, for us to start moving forward than to get some folks to come up right now and, and, and be anointed for this task that they've agreed to do. And if, you, if you've already made that commitment, would you come forward right now? And if you're interested in that, you're welcome to come forward as well, of being a prayer warrior for Jesus, that you have made a commitment with your heart and your mind and your soul to do the work of Jesus Christ. And if you would lift your hands, come on up here, Miss Diane, I'll help you up as well. I'll go. Now, they've been, they've been lifted up and raised up by Miss Jennifer over there. Everybody say, hey, Miss Jennifer. And thank her for the work that she's done in preparing everybody. But raise your hand up as I provide this anointing. And I'm blessed that you would come forward today and receive this anointing. In the name of Jesus Christ, who's calling you to be the warrior that would make a difference in the people's lives in this congregation right here, that you would pray for, for our worship team, that you would pray for the pastor and pray for the congregation and the, those who would be behind you. You're blessing this church. We need your work, we need your heart, and we need your soul to do the work that you're called to do. And thank you, and God bless you, that you've answered that call in your life to be a prayer warrior for this church. And teen, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm so thankful for all the work that you do for the church. Your heart and your spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, makes a difference. And that you would step forward and help us become stronger and help us become wiser and become more loving and caring and nurturing for each other is a gift that beyond measure. And I'm so thankful that you're willing to give your life to the, in the name of Jesus Christ to become the person God calls you to be. Not an easy task, and I'm so thankful for that. And God bless you for that. El, God bless you for the work that you do in the name of Jesus Christ, not just here but every place. But here you made a commitment to follow Jesus, the teachings of Jesus, to be the prayer warrior he's called you to be, a hard and difficult step to make because it asks you to go deeper than maybe you've ever been comfortable doing, asking you to give of yourself in ways that you just takes you out of your comfort zone. But, Al, I just know that God has got a mission for you to help this church, to help each other, to help us all grow in our faith in the name of Jesus Christ. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart in the name of Jesus. God bless you and thank you for your commitment to helping our church grow spiritually. Diane, the same I wish upon you. In his holy and precious name, I anoint you with this oil this morning that you might know and feel his presence in a new and special way. That through the Holy Spirit that you will feel the call and answer it. And do so with a sense of enthusiasm and joy in your heart. Even though you struggle, I think you get it. You understand how important it is for, to, to live a life that Jesus teaches us, that you might experience joy and peace and the knowledge that you've been saved in the name of the Holy Spirit that, and God, that you are feeling that and accepting that and coming forward and sharing it with those who are with you today in his holy and precious name. Everybody says who loves Jesus with one big voice, Amen. Would you thank these wonderful people for leading us as prayer warriors today? God bless you.